Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and this right here is Beetlejuice. Do you remember Beetlejuice? Do you remember how people were talking about it possibly exploding? And we even detected unusual gravitational waves coming from the region? Well, as you can probably guess, it didn't explode. Let's talk about what happened and what's happening to it now. Welcome to Adame. So here's Beetlejuice and actually right here somewhere is our sun for comparison. Beetlejuice as you probably know by now did not do anything special, except for scientists. For scientists it mattered to achieve the lowest dimness ever observed. It actually has never been so dim pretty much ever. And the thing is we've analyzed this dimness very thoroughly and we now have pretty clear reasons to believe that it wasn't the star itself that was dimming, it was something in its vicinity. And even though a lot of people did expect some sort of fireworks or some sort of light show that would be produced if the star went supernova, as I mentioned in some of the previous videos, none of the scientists really expected the star to go supernova. It was a little bit too early and one study even suggested that it was probably way way too early. And mostly because of what we discovered inside Beetlejuice, which was quite surprising. You can find out more about this from one of the uh, videos that are going to be popping up somewhere above my head eventually. But during its minimum, it actually became really dim. It went from being the top 10 brightest stars to something like top 20, reaching only something like 30% of its total brightness, which is really surprising and this was of course quite unpredictable and um, very difficult to explain at first. By February 17, 2020, when most of the world was talking about COVID-19 pandemic, Beetlejuice maintained its dimness for about 10 days or so. And then, as I mentioned in my last video, it started to slowly get in brighter. And as you can probably imagine, it hasn't really stopped brightening since. And here's what the graph of brightness looks like as of today when I'm making this video. As you can see right here, it's giving us a smiley face. Basically, it's now going up quite dramatically. This was the minimum, and this is what it was like in the last few weeks um, since then. As a matter of fact, it's been brightening by about 2% every single day since. Which is just to show us that it never really changes average brightness. Something else right here made it dip in brightness and created these unusual observations, especially right here in the southern part, that were observed in December of 2019. And that something is almost certainly a very very large dust cloud. And even though we have no idea where the gas cloud came from, we can only speculate it probably came from Beetlejuice itself or possibly some of the planets that used to orbit Beetlejuice and either became disrupted by tidal forces or possibly fell apart for other reasons. Either way, this extremely large gas cloud very likely covered the southern part of Beetlejuice and essentially caused its brightness to drop so much that it appeared to be losing about 70% of the total light. Now all of this becomes even clearer when you actually measure the temperature of the light we received. Because normally, if a star starts losing its brightness, its temperature should also decrease and this should be quite apparent to us. But this didn't happen. The temperature of Beetlejuice was actually pretty much the same as it always was, suggesting that something else was actually basically just covering the southern part, allowing only some light to get through. And because of the shape produced here and also because this took so long, this was almost certainly some sort of a cloudy um, dust-like object made up of really small particles about 10 to maybe 300 micrometers in size. Something that we actually even observe here in the solar system. So in other words, Beetlejuice is now going back to normal and within probably a few weeks, possibly by May, it's going to become just as bright as it always was. Well, the one thing we don't know and would really like to find out about is what was this gas made out of? Because for example, if this was some sort of a crystalline or silicate based uh, gas, we could probably deduce that this was either from a broken up planet or some sort of an asteroid or possibly even from uh, various other objects in the star system. However, if this is made from some sort of carbon compounds or icy compounds or even just something else entirely, it would probably allow us to study various comets around the system or possibly even find out if there are any gas giants in the region. At the same time, the so-called circumstellar dust, if this is what it was, could allow us to study the evolution of these very giant stars and also allow us to understand how they progress through various stages in their existence. Which is of course important because our sun one day will become really similar to this as well. 
And what's really interesting is that for these types of particles and for this type of gas, or these dust clouds, the actual motion is mostly governed by the pressure from the star radiating energy itself. And to some extent it's even governed by gravity from other stars. So trying to understand the dynamic of these types of dust clouds is also somewhat important. But what's even more interesting is that we actually have quite a lot of these effects here in the solar system and you can even see them from Earth. Now let me tell you a little bit more about these dust clouds that you can possibly even see tonight. The phenomenon I'm referring to is known as zodiacal light. It's actually formed by dust clouds here in the solar system that are usually formed by either asteroids or essentially shredded asteroids or by comets that were broken up over time. Typically, it can only be seen in extremely dark conditions, but this is kind of what it would look like if you were to see it in the night skies somewhere uh, on the planet. It resembles this really unusual glow and it's basically created by the sun itself. It's the sunlight striking the dust cloud that then refracts toward us and creates these beautiful shapes. The actual shape and the color can also be different depending on its origin. It can either be from comets, it can also be from asteroids, and it also depends on the size of the particles which can be either really tiny, about 10 micrometers, or much larger, about 300 micrometers. And this phenomenon even occasionally has been identified as the so-called false dawn, because it almost looks like the sun is about to come up, but in reality what you're looking at are the refractions and, and reflections from the dust particles around the solar system. And also because they usually are seen either before the sun rises or right after the sun sets. And generally speaking, some of these dust clouds can even combine together forming these relatively large in some sense uh, donuts, basically these dust donuts or dust clouds that can then uh, propagate through the solar system creating these really large beautiful phenomena. But it was not until the 70s, until the Pioneer 10 probe, that we were able to discover the origin of these unusual phenomena. It was actually the Pioneer probe that was able to discover and connect the relationship between the zodiacal lights and of course the interstellar dust that it was detecting as it was flying through space. And so the scientists do believe that something very similar or very similar phenomenon was responsible for the Betelgeuse dimming as well. Although possibly way way larger and way more massive, simply because Betelgeuse is dramatically larger than the sun. So obviously a really large cloud needs to be in front of Betelgeuse for its brightness to go by 70%. But for now that's kind of all we know. In other words, what we've learned from Betelgeuse, apart from it being a really exciting star to study, is that it also has created a lot of these dust clouds that we now will probably be studying in a little bit more detail. Although unfortunately for those of you who wanted a supernova, it's now almost unlikely to happen. At the same time, all of the excitement around Betelgeuse allowed us to study uh, all of these effects and all of these unusual phenomena in a little bit more detail, and I really can't wait for new studies to come out and new discoveries to come out about this beautiful star. But I guess what's really exciting here is that we were able to connect the phenomenon from the solar system, the so-called zodiacal lights, with what's happening to another star at a distance of over 700 light years away. Which is actually really fascinating when you think about it because it means that our understanding of the universe has advanced so much now that it doesn't take long for us to try to establish various uh, unusual phenomena out there. Although obviously there are still a lot of mysteries for us to discover. But until we learn more about Betelgeuse, that's unfortunately it for this beautiful star. It's unlikely we're going to talk about this um, anytime soon, but I guess you never know. On that note, thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe consider supporting this channel on Patreon because it does help me quite a lot. Alternatively, you can also support this channel by buying the beautiful, wonderful person t-shirt that you can find in the description below. I'll see you tomorrow, space out, come back tomorrow to learn something else, and as always, bye bye